Welcome to a lesson on defining a piecewise smooth parameterization of a path in the xy plane to prepare for line integrals. One skill needed to successfully evaluate line integrals is to be able to define a smooth parameterization of a given path in the xy plane. This means you want to be able to break up a given curve and define it in terms of t so each piece is smooth while the value of t remains continuous. So let's take a look at our first example. Our curve is this two by two square, and since the square has four sides, we'll have a parameter for each side. So we'll label this curve one, curve two, curve three, and curve four. So for curve one, we go from the point zero, zero to the point two, zero. So that's pretty straightforward. If we let x equal t and y equals zero, and then define t on the closed interval from zero to two, we would take the path of curve one. Now for curve two, we go from the point two zero to the point two two. Notice x is equal to two, and y increases from zero to two, but we can't just put y equals t because the value of t now has to start at two. So if we start y at t and then subtract two, and then let t go from two to four, when t is four, y would be equal to two, and it would take the path of curve two. Now let's take a look at curve three. We go from the point two two to the point zero two. But now t has to start at four, and we'll see where it stops. So we need to create a formula with t in it, where t starts at four, and x goes from two to zero. So if we let x equal two minus t minus four, let's see what that does. When t is four, we subtract zero, that's good. When t is five, we would subtract one, that's good. And when t is six, we would subtract two, that would give us zero, so that's good. And then our equation for y would stay at y equals two. So t's on the closed interval from four to six this time. Now for curve four, go from the point zero two to the point zero zero. X stays at zero. We need an equation for y, but t has to start at six. So very similar to what we did up here. Y starts at two, and now we're gonna subtract. Instead of just t, we'll have to have t minus six. When t is six, we'd have two minus zero. When t is seven, we'd have two minus one, so we stop at t equals eight. So now we'll go ahead and write this curve as a vector valued function using these parameterizations. So we'll have four pieces. The first one, first piece will be t comma zero. T is on the interval from zero to two. Then we'll have two comma t minus two from two to four. Here we're gonna have two minus t plus four. It's gonna be six minus t for the x component. And then y is two. This is from four to six. And for the fourth curve of zero comma, this is gonna be two minus t plus six, that'll be eight minus t. And t is from six to eight. Let's go and take a look at another example. Here the given curve is an ellipse given by this equation here. X squared divided by nine plus Y squared divided by four equals one. So to parameterize this one, we're actually gonna use a trig identity. We know that cosine squared T plus sine squared T is equal to one. Then using the given equation, if we let X equal three cosine t, this would give us nine cosine squared t divided by nine. And if we let y equal two sine t, this would give us four sine squared divided by four. That would satisfy the equation for this curve. Now we have both x and y expressed as functions of t. And if we trace out this curve starting here and going around the ellipse, we could let our vector valued function have an x component of three cosine t 
and a y component of two sine t for the given curve where t is on the closed interval from zero to two pi. We should be all the way around the ellipse. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more. So for our last example, we have a path that starts here at the origin, follows the cubic function out to this point of intersection and then down back to the origin along the line y equals four x. This point of intersection here is the point two, eight. So this would be curve one and this would be curve two. For curve one, we can let x equal t. So t would have to be on the interval from zero to two. And then if x is equal to t, y would be equal to t cubed. Now for the second curve, we know that t has to start at the value of two. And our path is along this line from the point two, eight, back to the origin or zero, zero. So for x, it starts at two, and then t also starts at two, so we have two minus and then t minus two. When t is two, this would be zero. When t is three, this would be two minus one. When t is four, we'd have two minus two, which would be zero, back at the origin for the x coordinate. Now see if we can find an equation for y. We know the y coordinate will start at eight and decrease to zero along the line y equals four x. So this slope here is gonna be an important part to this equation. We'll let y start at eight, and we wanna subtract four times now if we can come up with an expression in terms of t, where t is on this interval, but this quantity takes on the values from zero to two, it would satisfy the values for y. So if we put t minus two here, let's check it. When t is two, we would be subtracting zero from eight. When t is three, we'd have eight minus four. And when t is four, we'd have eight minus four times two, which would give us zero. So this works. Let's go ahead and write this as a vector valued function. So the first curve we have x equals t, y equals t cubed. Close interval from zero to two for t. And let's go ahead and simplify our expressions for curve two. Here we'd have two minus t plus two, that's four minus t. And then for the y component we have eight, and this would be plus eight, so that'd be 16, and this would be minus four t. And t is on the closed interval from two to four. So as you can see, some of these formulas can be a little tricky when trying to determine how to manipulate an expression for t to get the values that we do need to make these formulas work. I hope you found these examples helpful.